Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. And coming up here on today's show, I have five moves that I want the Las Vegas Raiders. I want Josh McDaniels, Dave Ziegler, to do five things before Raiders training camp starts. For those of you that do not know, training camp begins July 18th for the rookies, UDFAs, and quarterbacks. Vets, they report on July 20th. So we're going to do these in order because this is the way that I believe that it needs to get done. Coming in here at number one, it's extend Darren Waller. I'm sick and tired of not knowing whether or not Waller is going to have a new deal. We know that for quite some time now, Waller, his new agent, they've been in conversations with the Raiders trying to get that new deal. Waller has said all the right things. He plans on showing up to training camp. He showed up to mandatory OTAs despite him being the 17th highest paid tight end in the league. I think we understand how certain contracts work. But when you have a player that is just as physically gifted as Waller, on top of that, you bring in a brand new head coach who is going to use two tight end sets. Waller is going to be important. And then on top of that, yes, the Raiders have Devontae Adams. But Waller is still going to get 120-plus targets, and you want to make sure that that's the type of guy he's really, really happy. Last season, did battle some injuries, but still was able to average over 60 receiving yards per game. There is not too many offenses out there that have a weapon, and that's what Darren Waller is, an absolute weapon. And he probably is not going to get 90, 107 catches, but if he can be around that 80 grabs, over 1,000 yards, probably closer to double-digit touchdowns, that's phenomenal value. And I've been a believer, the sooner you get this deal done, the more money you're going to save, because what I'll never understand is this. If an NFL team who has the salary cap space that the Raiders have right now at about 20.2 mil, don't make a move that you ultimately believe that you're going to make sooner rather than later. Just get the deal done. Because to me, right now, here are your highest paid tight ends per year. I have a, been a big believer. It's George Kittle. It's Travis Kelsey. It's Darren Waller. I can also throw in Mark Andrews. And then it's everyone else. The reason why I want the Raiders to get this deal done is because the longer you wait, the more it could go up. So David and Joku and there was three tight ends that were franchise tagged this offseason. David Njoku, Mike Kosicki, Dalton Schultz. I don't see the Cowboys extending Schultz. The Browns have already extended Njoku. Now he's top five in that money. And if the Dolphins decide to extend Gesicki, the fact that he played 77% of the snaps as a wide receiver last season, it actually wouldn't surprise me if Miami gave him low-end wide receiver but top-end tight end money, like $17 million per year. And if that happens the Darren Waller number continues to go up. So if I was running the books, if I was writing the paychecks, this would be my Waller extension projection. I would give him a three-year deal, three-year extension, which is $48 million, $16 million per year, give him $30 million guaranteed. That then makes him the highest paid tight end in the entire league. If you essentially take those three years, tack him onto his two years that he already has now, I mean, five years at an average of $12.4 million, that's not even top seven. So again, I understand making him the highest paid tight end right now for a three-year new contract, but when you look at it from his entire five-year span, it is a little bit different. I could also see the Raiders going back to that three-year extension, taking two years, tacking on another year, and then essentially just giving him a raise Kind of what you saw what the Rams did with Aaron Donald. They just gave him a raise. They didn't add any extra numbers. Now, the Raiders report, we're continuing to get new watchers here, but I found this number to be pretty interesting. In terms of the last 28 days, 42.1% of the people that were watching the Raiders report weren't subscribed. And I believe it's because a lot of people out there like my dad are like, oh, I don't know how to create a YouTube account. Well, this is what I want you to do. Create a YouTube account. It helps out the Raiders report a lot. Here's how you do it. First, you just click sign in on YouTube, create an account, I would say for myself, you fill out the information, first name, last name, then on YouTube, go to Raiders Report, click subscribe, and turn on those notifications because the more viewers we get, the more content we can create. And training camp, right around the corner. The preseason, it's right around the corner. We're going to be doing a lot of different styles of shows here on the Raiders Report, and I simply do not want you to miss it. And believe it or not, the extra sub numbers, they help the show out quite a bit. Let's go to the next thing that I believe the Raiders should do before training camp. Extend Denzel Perriman. 
When you saw what the Raiders did this offseason by extending Derek Carr, Max Crosby, Hunter Renfro, they wanted to keep some of these pieces together. And earlier in the offseason, I was like, man, I don't know if the Raiders end up extending Perriman because I don't know how he's going to fit in Patrick Graham's system. Well, according to the reports, Perriman looked really good. The Raiders want him around. He's a, a leader. I was told that he has a chance to wear the green dot on the back of the helmet, which is essentially the quarterback. And if you believe that you're going to keep him around, well, let's keep him around. He does have a $3.04 million dead cap hit this season. So he really doesn't cost all that much money. And I'm not going to sit up here and say that I'm going to project Perriman to get 154 tackles again. No, it's, it's not going to happen. The reason why you get so many tackles in a Gus Bradley system is because the linebackers simply do not blitz often. They would hang back, and then you get a lot of tackles. In Patrick Graham's defense, I could see Perriman being used maybe a little bit more as a, as a rusher, not, not purely as a rusher because that's not quite his game, but there's going to be a lot of switching in and out. So to me, if he can be around that 70 tackle number, which would also be almost like a career high for him, that's still pretty solid production. Now, last season, his overall PFF grade was 61.9, run defense grade of 68.0, pass rush grade of 77.8, coverage of 57.0. For Perriman to take that next step and be an every down linebacker, he does need to get a little bit better in the coverage area, which he might not really need to because the Raiders signed J.M. Brown, you have Divine Diablo, but if there's a situation where you believe that team is going to run the ball, I want Denzel Perriman out there, even though he is a terrible chef. I watched him on Instagram Live. It was really hard to get through. But, hey, took four hours to make rice. It's all good. In terms of what type of contract would I give him, I give him a two-year extension, total $11.0 million. Give him $5 million in guarantee. That's an average of 5.5. When I think about some of the other deals that have gone down, I look at a Jordan Hicks contract, two years, 10 mil. And this is essentially what you're going to get out of a good middle linebacker in the National Football League. So then you tack that one year onto what he's already got. It's three years, 14 mil. That's an average of $4.6 million per year. Give him the guarantees on top of what he's already getting this season. You're looking at 6.3. To me, Denzel Perriman is a really solid player. Yes, he's getting up there in age, but I'll take somebody 29, 30, 31 years old who's still playing at a high level and not only playing at a high level, but as a leader in a locker room with a lot of young players and a lot of moving parts in a brand new regime. So we talked about extending Darren Waller. We talked about extending Denzel Perriman. If you were Josh McDaniels, if you were Dave Ziegler, who would you extend first? Would you extend Waller, type 83? Or would you go with Denzel Perriman? Let me know in the comment section right now, type 52. I love Perriman, but I'm going to go Waller first for the simple fact of it is easier to replace Perriman because of the talent he is and the position he plays more than it is easier to replace Darren Waller. You don't find Wallers growing on trees, and I have a lot of confidence in Foster Moreau. But he's not Darren Waller. Let's go to the next move that I believe the Raiders should make before training camp. It's add a defensive tackle. And we're going to look at some free agent options. We're also going to look at some potential options that you could go out and trade for. The reason why I want the Raiders to add a DT, it's because the depth is not there. Jonathan Hankins is recovering still from his surgery. I've been told he's progressing in the right direction. That's why he was able to travel last week. The Raiders cleared him. Bilal Nichols still battling that knee injury. You got two rookies in Neil Farrell. Matthew Butler, there's just not a lot of experience, and the Raiders did struggle last season against the run, ranked 19th in the NFL. For me, there's still a lot of good free agent defensive tackles out there, and I've ranked these guys from here from 1 to 10. The names that most of y'all are going to be looking at are probably the top three, Sheldon Richardson, Linval Joseph, and Dominican Sue. Heck, I would even throw in the name Eddie Goldman would be my top picks if I had a little extra money to spend. If you wanted to go a cheaper route, Danny Shelton has some ties there with the New York Giants. New England Patriots, Darius Phylon I thought did a pretty well job last season, though I want to know how healthy he is. At the end of the day, though, you can't honestly look at me and tell me the Raiders don't need to be able to improve at the defensive tackle spot. Let's just say you want to get a little bit more ballsy and you don't want to look at some of those free agents. If you could trade for somebody like Deron Payne, I know what Washington said. They don't want to trade Payne. I've heard it 10 times this offseason, and then the player gets dealt. I don't care if you have a good enough deal. I believe you can make it happen. Fletcher Cox is an interesting name, even though the Eagles are in win-now mode. 
They did draft Davis out of Georgia, Michael Brockers, Ross Blacklock, and then I am going to throw out one more name in Raekwon Davis. These would be the defensive tackles I personally would target. Now, we do videos every single day here on YouTube. I go live, but guess what? We even provide more content over on Locals. You can become a member for free, or if you want that exclusive content, like if you want to watch this video, history suggests Josh Jacobs not going to lead the Raiders in rushing yards this season. If you want to see what ESPN thinks the Raiders' final offseason move should be, Join our Locals community at RaidersReport.Locals.com. I make a lot of different styles of videos over here. I went live yesterday on Sunday. Did a little cookout with my dog Chuck and my girlfriend. We had a good time answering questions. So if you enjoy Raiders content, if you're a diehard fan, then scan this QR code right here. I dare you because there's a lot of people that watch the Raiders Report on YouTube. You know a lot. The people on Locals... I would take them pound for pound, if that's the right way to describe it, in terms of Raiders knowledge over just about anybody because of the sheer amount of content you are ingesting. So somebody asked me the other day, all right, well, what about your yearly supporters? Because I'm thinking about starting a fantasy football league once we get closer to the season, and it's going to be for locals' yearly supporters. Here are the last five people that joined locals, became a yearly supporter. Remember, it's $10 a month, $100 for the year, but you get two months for free. So shout out to EJ Raider, Pro Shea 67, Fighter 73, Drew 400, and then Green Raider. Appreciate you all for joining the, the locals community. Let's go to the next thing that I believe the Silver and Black should do before training camp. Sign another edge or outside linebacker. And the reason why I'm not going to throw a trade in here is because realistically, the only player that I would trade for as an edge right now that makes sense is Robert Quinn, but he is going to cost a little bit of money. In terms of the Raiders defensive end, you got Max, you got Chandler Jones, arguably the best defensive end duo in the entire league. Besides that, though, Cleveland Furl, Tayshawn Bauer, Malcolm Koontz, Gary Green, Zach Van Valkenburg, please. I mean, there's not a lot of depth here besides the two faces that you see on screen. In terms of some of the other edges out there that you could sign on the free agent market, you're looking at a Trey Flowers, who has also worked in New England defenses. Carlos Dunlap is an old man, but he's still getting it done. Eight and a half sacks last season. JPP might only have seven fingers, but guess what? He can still put those seven fingers in the dirt and get after the quarterback. You got Carl Nassib, who I actually think fits better in a 3-4 defense. Everson Griffin's older. And then I love me some Ben Sumayoa. He might not be as good as what he was in 2019 for the Raiders, but bring him in, put him in 25% of the snaps, let him pin, pin his ears back. And then you could also actually potentially have Chandler Jones be a stand-up linebacker. Speaking of those linebackers, let's look at some of these guys because on the interior, you have Perriman. You have Divine Diablo, Jayon Brown. I believe those are your top three. However, outside linebacker is still a question mark to me. I do like Kyler Fackrell a lot. He did have 10 and a half sacks the one year he played with Patrick Graham when he was a linebacker's coach all the way back in Green Bay. But to me, Fackrell's a good outside linebacker. After that, I don't really know what the plan is for more you know, outside guys. You have Anthony Barr. He can do it all. Jamie Collins would probably be the top guy I would pick for bang for your buck on this list because he can do just about anything in this defense. A.J. Johnson, Deonta Hightower would be another very intriguing name to throw in, be a solid veteran that can understand what the coaching staff is going to want. And then K.J. Wright's still out there. Hell, I would be more than happy to bring K.J. Wright back to the silver and black. So what's the bigger need? We talked about edge. We talked about linebackers. Do you believe, after seeing the names that I provided, the free agency, which one are you, what's the bigger need? What's the route you're going? Type edge, or you could type LB. The final move that the Raiders need to make, you need to figure out the right tackle spot because I'm going to go nuts. And I'm driving myself insane because I sit here and I wonder who's going to be the right tackle. And I just don't understand after seeing last season, after seeing Derek Carr run for his life, after all the headaches that Raider Nation experienced on the right side, whether it was penalties, whether it was holdings, or just outright the lack there of blocking, that the Raiders didn't really do anything this offseason besides draft Dylan Parham. Round three, pick number 90 out of Memphis. I like Parham a lot, but you still need to be able to figure out that right side, and is Alex Leatherwood ready to take that step? I don't know. Is Brandon Parker? God, I hope we don't have to rely on Brandon Parker again, but you need to figure out the right side. If it's not Leatherwood, if he can't get that job done, here are four other names, and yes, Darrell Williams, Darrell Williams, Darrell Williams. I feel like every 
every time I talk about it, we should have to take a drink on this show because of the amount of times I have mentioned this man's name. He can still play right tackle at a high level. Hell, he'd probably even still be the best right guard on the Raiders. If you can't get Darrell Williams, Bobby Massey, Riley Reef, Brandon Shell, all other names to at least keep in mind. If you don't want to sign those dudes, I'll tell you this. I would get ballsy right now. If the Jets were like, we'll take offers on Makai Becton, I would do it. And the reason why I would do it is because to me, Makai Becton is a project. And Raiders offensive line coach Carmen Rosillo has done a very good job in years previous of taking projects of just humongous human beings and turning them into solid players. Trent Brown is a perfect example of that. Trent Brown in New England is a good player. Why he shows up, Carmen Basilla also was able to work with him. And I know if you were able to get Mekhi Becton healthy with a healthy Colt Miller on your tackle spot, your tackles are set for a very, very long time. Other names to keep in mind, Andre Dillard, and then I'll throw out another name in Jawan Taylor of the Jacksonville Jaguars. So those were the five things that I believe the Raiders should do before training camp. But hey, we always say this show is built on the backs of the nation, the most diehard fans out there. So what is something the Raiders should do before training camp? I'm going to be looking down in the comments what you're saying because that also means you made it this far in the video. So to put a bow on this and then I'm getting the hell out of here, extend Waller and Perriman, add a defensive tackle, sign another edge or outside linebacker, and please, for the love of God, figure out what you're doing at right tackle.